Thanks, Valentina, Peter, and Kevin for being here. Uh, I know you were yesterday on our lab, which had this very interesting question. Is it possible to be agile without CI, CD, and TDD? And what are even those things? So it was really surprising. I think we peaked at um, 25 live people interacting with us. Very lively discussion, one hour that turned into two hours. So thanks everybody who could collaborate and be there. Thanks everybody who actually just registered. And in this video today, what we want to do is actually offer you an opportunity to understand a more digested version of what happened yesterday. So there's a, a lot of good, um, good stuff that Valentina, Peter and Kevin will bring to us. So with that being said, I guess uh, we're going to go Valentina first, and then Peter and Kevin. But I would say, um, as you go in, if you can also remember to mention from your end, what was one thing that you found very surprising or unexpected? Uh, you came in with the expectations and wow, I didn't, didn't expect to see this at the board. So let us know, because for me, definitely it was one that I think you brought, Peter. So I'm pretty sure you're going to be bringing that into the conversation as well. So, Valentina, take it away, summarize for us what happened then. Uh, so I will just quickly zoom over um, the, the boards from, from yesterday. So these were all the draft notes. There were quite a lot of um, ideas which we um, went through and a lot of like diversity in responses and quite also lengthy responses. Uh, now, for, for this to make it, I guess, more digestible, I will go through like a shortened or summarized uh, version just uh, as an overview of what were the key concepts that were brought up. So first of all, for the question of uh, what is agile, you know, what's the essence of agility, uh, the key points which came up were Firstly, as the whole foundation of mindset and culture. So basically everyone, I think nearly everyone brought that up, both people who were, you know, product minded or technical minded. So uh, great, great to see that. And uh, the other topic, which also came as a foundational um, uh, point was technical excellence. And then as a result of this, um, the outcomes were essentially the possibility to do iterative and incremental development so that we can deliver value continuously. So here we can see the keywords value and the word continuous delivery. And what's the whole point of this? You know, we don't ju do just continuous delivery for the sake of it. It's done for the purpose of having feedback loops so that we can respond to change and we just then iteratively essentially uh, repeat these loops. So just to summarize the essence that really comes from this is that the foundation of agility that essentially it is mindset and culture. I mean, that's the root. Everything else comes on top. And when it's pushed, when, we, when someone actually achieves true agility, it's basically about continuously delivering value and being responsive to, to changes. So continuous feedback loops. Now, the next part, we looked at what is uh, CICD. So what's continuous integration? What's uh, continuous uh, delivery? The other also important note, of course, continuous delivery requires continuous integration to be in, in, in place first. So from the technical perspective, we need to have a pipeline for, for, for this automation. And to achieve the full definition of, okay, firstly, CI. CI by definition requires uh, build automation and test automation. So you need a self-testing build. And that's the definition of um, CI. Now, many companies are saying that they're doing CI, but they don't have test automation, which is actually uh, going against the definition itself. Then for the continuous delivery part, 
we need both the continuous integration, so build automation and test automation, but we also need deployment automation. So there, there shouldn't be any manual procedures to deployment. It should be able to be you know, automated with uh, uh, one click. Uh, the last also word, which we didn't really discuss yesterday, but I want to mention it is continuous deployment. That's like even the further level uh, above from this, whereby the actual deployment to production is, is continuous, but that's quite a, a um, how should I say, further off goal, even continuous delivery is, is great to, to achieve. The other also part which was mentioned was um, static code analysis also within these CI CD pipelines. So aside from tests, which provide us like um, assurance about does our system behave as expected, the static code analysis provides us with feedback about is our code, uh, you know, uh, written well, or if there's certain things which could be improved about code quality. And then we come to the question, what's the actual um, outcome? You know, why should we, why do we need CICD? Well, the key point is we end up getting frequent product delivery. And through this frequent product delivery, we can also get uh, product feedback from the users. And a nice one, also a nice other benefit is fearless Friday deployments. So deployments are no longer scary. They are, they are no longer uh, a special event. So the team feels safe. So it's not just about, you know, okay, the product and getting feedback about the product, but it also completely changes the development team experience and everyone just feels really safe and, and assured through, through all of this. And uh, the last one uh, about definitions, what is uh, test? What is test-driven development and what are its um, foundations? Well, first of all, it requires us to have the right mindset. So thinking of tests first and TDD has that red, green refactor um, cycle whereby the idea is you firstly write a test, you write some code, to make the test pass, then you can refactor and you keep on repeating this. And this is essential. So you don't write all the tests first and then the code. Instead, you do it iteratively. So TDD is actually helps you work in incremental and iterative way. So in the same way that you have those um, feedback loops on the user and product side, when the product is uh, released to the users, you here with TDD have these like micro, the smallest possible feedback loops for the development team. Other also aspects of TDD is um, driven by uh, behavior. So someone can read Kent Beck's original book to, to find out uh, more. And it's essentially an executable specification. So don't just like look at the word test, but it's actually specification of behavior. And uh, the other outcome that we get with test-driven development is it naturally causes us to have testable architecture. So this was the first part of the session yesterday where we went through uh, these definitions. Then we um, tried to summarize and answer the ultimate question. Can you be agile without uh, CICD. So on one side, uh, we had responses that yes, you can be agile without CICD and TDD, like that they are not essential, that it's the mindset and culture that's essential for agility and everything else is on top. And the other also a perspective that was provided that um, during the MVP, you can survive, you can be agile, you can deliver, you can get feedback without having you know, clean code, CI, CD, et cetera. But of course, when you uh, reach the post MVP phase, when you want to scale your product, okay, then the story changes. You do need you know, these technical practices, you can't be sustainable. So from this, we can see that in the short term, that 
yes, it is possible to survive without CICD and you can build a, a valuable product and test, you know, get, get, get feedback. Uh, we also had responses, maybe, which were that you can be agile, okay, with that, that you need CD, uh, CICD, but that you don't need TDD. In other words, the test last is, is enough. Now, from the definition of CICD, it, all it requires is a, a self-testing build. So it needs tests, but there's no specification that the tests have to be written um, first. Uh, so I guess if someone follows a disciplined approach, uh, maybe this could work, but maybe someone has seen this working though uh, in many, many situations quite often this might turn into test uh, never uh, development. So that's the other uh, coin of it. And uh, on the other end of the spectrum, we had perspectives that you can't be agile without CICD. So first of all, you do need a CICD pipeline for safe releases. And this is the only way that you can achieve sustainable development and delivery. So being able to be sustainably agile versus just illusory agile for like the first, you know, three sprints or six sprints or something like that. And uh, the other aspect was uh, about test-driven development. So you need tests to be protected um, against regression bugs and tests are needed in order to, for you to say that you're doing continuous integration. And uh, that TDD is simply the optimal way that we have of ensuring that we have this uh, uh, protection against regression bugs. But the other also benefit is that TDD really helps developers at the micro level have that incremental and iterative uh, development mindset. Then uh, after looking at this, we realized uh, that actually this question was maybe too narrow and there's certain other things which are more foundational. And then we actually came to this realization that we have a tree and that at the roots of this tree. So if we view agility as some kind of a tree that at the roots, you need the right mindset, the culture, the why, the motivation, and all of these things, it's, it's not related to programming, it's not related to process, it's simply the essence. And these are the roots of the tree, and without this, the tree can't grow. So assuming that we have these roots established in the organization that it's a healthy organization and you know has has the right mindset the why the motivation then we can um, how shall i say the tree can grow and this is when implementation of practices processes and tools comes in so when when it has a purpose you know to be used the other also things that start coming in is the need for technical skill sets and soft skills, so that the team needs to build a certain set of uh, expertise. And after we have all this, the tree can further continue uh, growing. And this is the point at which, which we can actually talk about continuous delivery. So all these automation aspects. So the um, build automation, the test automation and deployment automation. And for me, this was definitely uh, uh, seeing this as a tree that we're going you know, from the roots upwards was definitely a big uh, um, point of learning from the discussion yesterday. I mean, as everyone knows, I do post <laughs> my posts about TDD and um, continuous delivery and those kinds of topics. But if these foundations are missing, so if the mindset is missing or the motivation or the culture or the technical skill sets are missing, then we can't really talk about CICD and, and TDD at all. So this, this is the foundation. And the other also aspect of this is 
the overall satisfaction, like, okay, aside from the whole thing about the business value uh, and basically being successful in the market, we also have the aspect that we get both business satisfaction, so customer satisfaction, management satisfaction, but also we have development team satisfaction. And then we also summarize with uh, what's the possible pathway that a development team can progress and achieve agility. So here we're viewing agility not as a binary thing like you're agile or you're not agile, but rather a spectrum or a pathway like becoming just more and more and more agile. And essentially there's actually no no, then full, there's no 100% agility, you just continue going upwards. So the development team would firstly start off with the mindset and the motivation. So understanding the why and having the right mindset, then they can implement some kind of process framework. So whether it's Scrum or something else or certain uh, tools to, to help them with that process. And then after that, they can move on to these um, uh, technical topics like uh, build automation. So getting some kind of CI CD pipeline. And for example, let's automate just build first. You know, let's not be too, too ambitious and you know, just run ahead, but let's do the build first. Uh, deployment. Okay, so instead of manual deployment, let, let's uh, automate it. And these ones generally have been achieved by, by teams. Then we get to these a bit more difficult uh, topics about the tests. Uh, and the whole test mindset. So it's quite useful to firstly focus on even the mechanics of writing tests or what's the purpose, what are executable specifications. And you can do that with uh, test last development. In fact, that's the way I, I personally prefer it as well. And it came up definitely through the discussion yesterday, many teams doing test last development. And only when the team is actually comfortable with, you know, and understands the essence of tests as executable specifications, then you can do the mental shift and say, well, since tests are executable specifications, then we will drive the development with these tests. And this is when test-driven development becomes something natural. And this is when you get to the micro incrementalism and incre uh, iterative development. But this is not the end of the story. This is just the beginning. You need to continue uh, further improvements. So both improvements in everything from the culture, the process and, and technical excellence, and essentially it's, it's a, a never ending uh, journey. So yeah, just to summarize, for me, it was a really, really amazing session yesterday. Um, I, I liked the diversity and how we were able to synthesize all these viewpoints and to discover, you know, okay, what's the essence of agility and how everything uh, builds on top and that it's actually a journey of continuous uh, growth. So, yeah, that, that's all from, from my side. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, but on my point, I, I don't have any many years in uh, development, just for, uh, for four years for the moment. Um, I start on a society, a bank society, uh, named Société Générale. I don't know if you know, it's a French bank. Um, I know this bank. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's called, called Banking Group. Uh, we yes, 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 yes. here in a kilometer from this place. It's a very good, very good company as well uh, when you are a developer because uh, you will use uh, many, uh, many new uh, tools, uh, many new uh, framework, or, or, um, and, uh, and we, we, we are start to use uh, Agile. Uh, to the beginning, just, uh, just do the, the ceremony, uh, just, uh, just do the meeting uh, all the day uh, after uh, one week and one month. And we, we try to make a shorter the delivery uh, for make it incremental. And in the parallel, we are trying to make tests uh, in the same time. Because mm -hmm. uh, when we start, we are all, ge all juniors. And uh, when we speak about tests, we don't know everything about that. So mm -hmm. uh, for me, the, the key point for make the team growing is the leader. We need to leader mm -hmm. to show you how that work and 
and uh, why? Why you need to use test? Why is not uh, is why is, is very important uh, for for the for the project? So we are we are start to uh, to um, to learn it, uh, but we are stopped before uh, we are stopped before uh, use uh, TDD. We don't have uh, use TDD at all. In my actual uh, mission, I changed uh, since uh, last October. I mean, yes, last October. And uh, I'm in a new uh, enterprise. And when I come on the project, the project is uh, on the middle of this life. And uh, we don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't um, find any test at all. And when I, I, I say to the leader, why, why we don't have tests in the, in the project, is just say, uh, we don't have the time. Is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a frequently uh, response we hear we are that we don't have the time for for make tests, but the problem is when you don't make tests at the start of the project. I don't speak about MVP. Huh? I, have, I speak after uh, when we don't make tests. Uh, me, I was new on the project. I don't know the project. I don't know the user uh, requirement, and when uh, some sometime I need to uh, add feature or fix bug. I'm so afraid to change the code because um, I don't know if I will uh, break something because I don't uh, know the rule for the for the for for the agreement. So we are work on that. We are uh, one month or two months. I don't remember. We start to create all the tests we're missing for the for the project. We start to zero and increase for our. Middle cover <laughs> for, for, <laughs> for, 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 yes, for, 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 um, for fix the late. And after that, when we are, we are saying, okay, now when you pick up a user story, we need to make the feature and we are monitoring to make the test in the parallel in the same pull request is what I say uh, yesterday. For that, we need a good uh, a good leader for um, for make you confidence in this uh, in this practice because uh, when you are new, it's very difficult. Uh, when you come to the project, little, middle, big projects, the same uh, same thing for all. Uh, when you don't know the the requirement, is very very so easy to break something. I break many many things the project, but uh, after that, now we are. Uh, um, Almost at the, at the end of the project, we need to deliver uh, the next month, and we are uh, make all the tests for all the um, all the requirements um, for this project. But like Valentina says, not the end, because today we we try to make TD with a with a fixing bug. When we receive a bug, we write the test in an integration test for um, for for find the bug, fix it. And let the test is why is what uh, is uh, how we use TDD for uh, for the moment. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's a very smart way I find to uh, not only integrate the technique but at least where it's already hurting, so it makes it very like a useful right away. Exactly. Now, uh, this mention regarding bugs, I actually found it uh, a motivating way to start uh, TDD uh, <laughs> because uh, quite often uh, it's uh, natural. I mean, no one should do even in with manual uh, testing, like you firstly have to manually reproduce the bug to understand, okay, can you reproduce the bug? Uh, and then you proceed to the fix. So then within that, uh, I guess, test driven and uh, becomes is, is natural and then after that practice later the team can transition to even applying it to user stories but yeah it's definitely easier to start off uh, with the bugs uh, the other aspects which i found really uh, insightful in terms of what uh, kevin was uh, talking about was uh, firstly the importance of leadership and I guess that's one topic which we didn't go in previous parts that much into detail. We, we were talking more, more about like, I guess, general culture and team, but the question is who will drive these changes? And well, in practice, changes are generally driven by true leaders. 
so if we have uh, leaders who are both setting, you know, good examples in terms of focusing on uh, value and leaders who are also uh, setting examples in terms of um, technical excellence, then that's a, a much faster way to transition change within the organization versus uh, reading books or uh, some other uh, more passive activities. And then that one leader can have an impact on the team and then they are actually building the next generation of leaders. So um, this can multiply then across um, other teams. So I found this uh, quite uh, powerful. And uh, the other also uh, useful points that Kevin mentioned was the self, uh, self initiative. So when someone you know, comes on a project and the general uh, excuse for lack of tests is you know we didn't have time for 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 testing it's like we have more time for bug fixing after production versus preventive exactly um, like actually uh, building quality in and actually you know how kevin mentioned you know taking the initiative to actually change the situation instead of accepting it and starting you know with Let's try any, you know, test first and, le and then later to transitioning, for example, TDD for bugs uh, and subsequently for um, uh, user stories. And the other also aspect, which, which I found quite a uh, uh, useful element, especially regarding TDD, is the whole aspect of executable specifications. So when there's no test, all the domain knowledge, so knowledge about behavior of system is embedded within the minds of certain people. So if a new person comes in, they don't have that knowledge and they can easily break the system. But it's not just the issue when a new person joins the team, even existing team members Everyone knows generally like just some parts of the system so they can again break something or they can break due to the way some components interact or even when someone is working on their own module. Since it grows over time and it's not possible for a human within their brain, like they're not a supercomputer, to be aware of uh, all those uh, requirements all at once and to compute in their head what will be the result of this they, they will basically, um, you know, do a breaking change. So that's the big thing, definitely, I think, which was explained well uh, by Kevin about um, TDD is tests acting as executable specifications and that then we can do, you know, changes in, you know, faster, uh, safer way. So, yeah, I, I really found that... Um, useful and um, you know everything that, that you mentioned and the whole progression of the team through through this journey so that's a really great i mean happy you know story so uh, looking forward to even further progress <laughs> i'd like to know yeah. have my own experience uh, i'll talk on leadership because uh, from my experience uh, of who, who initiates the kind of such a change like to involving the tdd and the person who is responsible for that can be a very different uh, guys and uh, the, here uh, what i observed the main you know waterline is it's if uh, the in initiative is from the grassroots or from authoritative so this uh, makes a very big difference in the such overall the process change okay Thanks, Peter. You know what? This whole conversation in the end made me think of a. I I, I wrote a piece back then where we're talking about coaching for compliance or coaching for potential, and it's a little bit you know even though we're talking about very technical stuff here in the end, and as we established with our technical folks yesterday, that mindset is still important. I guess if we take the guru uh, aspect of when we say the word mindset, and remember it's ways of thinking so if you think in a certain way then the skills that you develop and that you apply they have to do their online with that way of thinking um so i guess i will invite you to think and maybe we could even collaborate again in uh, in um, the piece of the leadership then that leader clearly has to understand the mindset but do they also have to be technical there's a key point
Yeah. Not always compliance all in one person. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, really, it's really rare skills to 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 be to live within the same guy. Okay. I found I found a, a very good, very good architect on a, on, a, on a Société Générale. He, uh, he encouraged uh, us to, to read many books and uh, to, to apply uh, architecture like, like uh, hexagonal architecture, uh, clean code. Uh, we, when, when we work with him, we need to read uh, Uncle, Uncle Bob's uh, book. It's mandatory. Mm. It's a very, very good leadership. I have several story points, but first I'd like to ask Valentina about uh, slides. It's not a big deal. You know, I'm pretty much you have a criticizing mind. It's, it's because I feel lack of satisfaction about what I have in my real life. That's uh, that's how I used to used to go in questioning, not because um, because I'd like to improve things that I see and um, make it co compliant with my uh, you know my mindset. So my, I have three questions. So so concerning this slides about the developer satisfaction that grows al along with the business satisfaction. Um, uh, well, for mindset differences, uh, as I experienced, uh, sometimes what I when I hear the word help for me, this uh, actually frequently means to enforce. So um, I'm, I think it's basically I'm scared to think about what the satisfaction can mean in, the, in that uh, in that axis, y axis, as we saw it, right? Uh, so what what satisfaction can mean inside of that mindset? But I think I'll translate it one day. The the thing I sh the essence what I should mention about that is uh, uh, actually business satisfaction it used to be accomplished from what I saw for the count of several other other things, and frequently the developer satisfaction is one of them. So there are they are not always follow along. Uh, second to note is about the tree representation the tree is all single uh, well for what i know tree uh, is uneasy to grow when it's single there are always a forest and we and we have to care about that such a things like a forest and how the tree can survive uh, within uh, other trees uh, which uh, basically is, is about uh, if uh, we represent the tree as a you know, single company or a single team or a single you know, product project, which uh, means there are other products and projects in this all kind of uh, ecosystem. But the difference uh, of um, why I, I think <laughs> no, uh, such kind of species is uh, basically very static. It's a very static representation. Uh, the real world changes uh, uh, drastically and very fast. So, for example, team can switch from project to project. We can split team to you know, two or three teams, and this will be uh, two or three trees by the time. Um, or vice versa, we can merge the teams and have the, the teams uh, say, we, ha we have had three projects, but now we have uh, you know, two or one single project. And uh, this is uh, basically too static, uh, I think, to represent it uh, like it. But who knows? But maybe it's uh, um, it's not a widespread experience. And the last to you note, know, but slide is uh, uh, well. It's one of the points I'd like to note. For example, uh, I thought I forgot about it. Note it tomorrow. As uh, well for that uh, amazing journey slide, which means for continuous improvement in the end. Of well, uh, from what I what I observed. Uh, it's uh, not easy to have the resources to have, uh, you know, improvement of the process on the stage that I uh, remind, I mean, uh, be it MVP or not MVP, but this is the stage of development when you grow out of the foundation and just uh, need to apply uh, with a bit of you know, skills to uh, make to this all nirvana with, you know, TDD and deployment automation and so on. This requires resources far from every business is about to invest in such resources and have it uh, on, on, the, on their business plan. It's all costs. Okay, uh, so for my current uh, story points, I, I think I, I used to be prepared for such kind of uh, you know presentations. Uh, no big deal. But yesterday, from what is uh, what uh, what 
I found uh, very interesting is that I supposed to see like what was the kind of you know talk. Uh, second thing to note is uh, from what I remember of such kind of a talks, uh, people used to be silent. So it's pretty cool to see so many motivated guys to talk about the interesting things. Uh, so uh, being said that, uh, I'd like to say for, for a couple of cornerstones. First, as from what I know, software development and the development at all is about the investments and developments are underqualified due to overall culture from what, what I see. So this, uh, for example, from what I understand about Agile, so it's all about my Agile understanding, sorry. Uh, it's from one side, it's a cargo cult. So for example, for TDD and CICD, what, what I absorbed is a kind of attributes that prevailed over their business value. And so also for some parts uh, applying such technical things like, uh, well, maybe VCS in the past by itself, I, I remember there were no TDD and CICD uh, in the productions. And uh, I, I remember it was the kind of, uh, from other side, aside of a part of current culture was premature business process optimization because for some part, they, they wanted to show that businesses are grown, have grown up of such kind of foundational things we have in the roots of our great trees. Very cool to see it like that. And But uh, it's only what should be seen for investors to attract all of this, you know, both employees and the investors and many other resources. Um, but it's uh, essentially, it's far from, it's frequently be in this situation when it's just far from the truth. And it's uneasy to recognize it early. Uh, second, from, my, from what I, uh, can, how can I explain my agile skepticism and uh, overall the project management theories uh, from what I saw by project management institutes and other stuff that I studied from my software development perspective, I'm not manager. Uh, well, as uh, we have to take the cultural experiences, and from uh, example of that, uh, I saw it's you you cannot uh, apply the same mindsets for both. Uh, you know, for, to to send Neil Armstrong to Moon, it's one of example I I found first, and to build the Saint Paul Cathedral, it's all different things and. Um, from what uh, I can saw, my look is as I can explain uh, for how I can see the Agile. I'd like to share my screen first. Where is it? I, I frequently do this. Yeah, you should be able to share. From, from, from where can I share my screen? Is it the menu? Yeah, it oh, should be I'll able to stop sharing. So okay, you yeah. Share. Start share. Oh, my. What is it? In the bottom, in the bottom, yeah, there you go. You can see it? Yeah, we see it. Yes. Sure, and you can see. This is about my um, understanding of Ken Brown, what I can see. It. But uh, first, I'd like to talk about Scrum. Everybody loves Scrum, maybe, to talk about. So we did not talk yesterday much about Ken Ben, so I'd like to talk about Scrum. So what I can see here for, from my point of view, it's maybe a matter of culture, cultural circumstances, but uh, that's how I can express my views. Well, uh, basically, it's a very big round in the middle which reminds the washing machine. I probably told it in, in a separate room we were when we were separated. And every, everything is rotating <laughs> like we are washing something. This is basically maybe the truth. But because, you know, as, as you know, if I, I, can, I can refer by now to the statistics, but, uh, you know, 60% of software development projects just fail. They do not end in the successful product that is useful for a very long time. What we know is a, a, a basically a life cycle of the product. It's, it's no, no big problem. It's just a fact. But uh, this fact is being used as uh, to wash the dirty money in the world. It's, uh, we know it's everything, but it's true. That's how I understand that. Uh, second, uh, from my software development perspective, 
I see the development team and uh, every person is equal to each other. We do not differentiate between them. <laughs> so, and uh, this basically means, mm, uh, from my point of view, uh, so you probably mean it's basically all about good, that everyone has the equal rights. But from my perspective, it's about having uh, the equal duties, but uh, every developer is different. How can you make them, uh, you know, suppose they can perform uh, the same duties? It's very good from a bus factor perspective, but this is not taken into the account on this exact diagram. Uh, second, what I can see is the development team is very small and uh, its processes, I can, we cannot even see them, but, but uh, there is a lot of communication between. Maybe, can, there are, there, they may be, there are informal hierarchies with this, such development team. They can achieve, you know, 50 or 70 people. It's a uh, very big, but first, they are not taken into the account. There, and second, it's a very small part of overall picture. So uh, it's, uh, this means that we have that the developers to the managers ratio in such a diagram is far from perfect. It's basically about 20 or 30 percent of the developers and everyone, every, everyone else is about management. Is, is it good to, for production of a product? Is it, is it good for that kind of a project? So basically, I did not take it uh, as a kind of approach. Well, basically, what it means in, in the practice uh, for, for example, for Kanban, as they can, as they saw it, we have every here is we have the every task uh, looking the same. <laughs> basically, have the same way. So for Kanban, uh, the developers, from my experience. Developers take the easiest task and uh, uh, do the better stats. And this is no no good. It's probably it's a known problem, and I might be underexperienced. Uh, so they reported. That's why I joined yesterday. I suppose it was all lecture. I had to know about it more. And for agile, it's even worse. Uh, for dev developers, used to invent th their own tickets. They put it on a backlog and they solve the things that they may be one, but it's not necessarily, it's really the major things that we should, should uh, resolve uh, for the project. But they are free to choose and they invent the, the, the tickets and uh, solve them. And it's, uh, that's basically the problem. Uh, I found uh, this really insightful, especially at the beginning, how you had the whole um, analogy regarding the trees and thinking about this in terms of the forest and ecosystem and the fact that it's um, not, not a static, but it's dynamic. So the actual system itself is constantly uh, changing. Uh, I found that uh, um, quite powerful and the other also useful uh, aspects, how, how you mentioned, um, went a bit more deeper into Scrum and Kanban, including, including the cases where uh, it goes wrong, whereby uh, the team is actually not working on valuable items, but are maybe potentially just inventing work. So working, you know, they're making something, they are delivering something, but it's actually not uh, the delivery of value. Um, so yeah, I, th thanks a lot. I really enjoyed the, this. Thanks for that. And uh, yes, I especially like to the uh, remark on the, um, um, and it goes with mindset in a way, which is be mindful that uh, we need to be prepared for the investment that it requires to be technically excellent yes. in, in all, all right. types of resources, not just money wise, but time wise and yeah, and allowing people to, to expand their, their skills in there. Uh, that's the beauty of the, the times we live in with the internet. We just cross our paths virtually like this and the whole thing can happen. <laughs> So <laughs> thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for you folks listening. And don't forget to check too. the link down below.